Radians is just a new way to measure angles. It's a different way of measuring angles. In the beginning, it's not going to be obvious why we would even want to do this. It's not going to be obvious that we have, uh, when we have these degrees that work so well, using an awesome number like 360 for a full circle, why would we want to do something so insane as introducing something other than the 360? But here we are, radians. So one full circle is 360 degrees. So go ahead. Was there a question? One full circle is 360 degrees. And that's equal to two pi radians. I know, I know, it seems ridiculous. But this is what we do. Another common way to break this down is to say that 180 degrees is pi radians. So a full circle that we would normally say is 360 degrees. This is a transcription test. There it is. So a full circle is 360 degrees, and that's going to be equal to 2 pi radians. Another common way to remember this is with a half circle, 180 degrees is pi radians. So we're going to go back around our unit circle and learn all of our common angles in degrees and radians. So we're going to, when we did the zero, 30, 45, 60, 90. And we just wrap that all the way around the circle. We're going to do the same thing in radians. I like this 180 equals pi radians because a lot of times we're going to be dealing with fractions of pi for our common angles. So if we take the 180 and divide it by two, that'll be 90 degrees. And that's going to be pi over two radians. So if we put up our quadrants, In degrees, the positive x-axis is where we have zero degrees. That's also going to be zero radians. This is also where we have 360 degrees. And so also where we have two pi radians. We just got these two measuring systems for our angles. On the negative x-axis, we have 100, uh, 180 degrees or pi radians.
up at the positive y-axis is where we have 90 degrees or pi over two radians. Here's how we're going to do this. We're gonna count around the, this unit circle. I know I didn't draw the circle. It kind of gets in the way. We're gonna go around the unit circle, counting with fractions of pi. So starting off with our pi and two pi, here we got zero pi. At 180, we have one pi. Then at 360, we're at two pi. So that's just going around one time, counting multiples of pi. Multiples of pi is multiples of one eight. If I go around counting 90 degree angles, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. That's going around once counting in multiples of 90. Next, we're going to want to count in multiples of pi over 2. Let's see the applause a little bit earlier because now we're going to be counting in fractions. Zero is zero pi over two. Up here is one pi over two. This pi is like a two pi over two. 270 is three pi over two. Two pi is like four pi over two. So that's counting around the unit circle in multiples of pi over two. One zero pi over two, one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two. If we cut this in half again, we'll see that 45 degrees is pi over four radians. So if we cut it in half again, 45 degrees is pi over four radians. Let's count around the unit circle in multiples of 45. So we got zero 45s, one 45, two 45s is 90, three 45s is a 135, four 45s is 180, five 45s is 225, six 45s is 270, seven 45s is 315. Now let's count around in pi over four. So 45 degrees is pi over four radians. This pi over two radians at 90 degrees, that's two 45s or two pi over four. 135 is three pi over four. 180 is like four pi over four. 225 is five pi over four. 270 is 6 pi over 4. 315 is 7 pi over 4. And 360 is 8 pi over 4. Multiples of 90 are also multiples of 45. And we can simplify them. Because it's 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. 4 pi over 4 is 1 pi. 
3 pi over 2 is 6 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. So we're just counting around with fractions. We're going to divide the 180 again. This time we're going to divide the 180 by 3. So instead of cutting it in half and getting 90, we're going to divide by 3 and get 60. But we're also going to get a new picture. Because it's getting a little crowded on this one. It's a reusable notebook. Once again, we're going to start with the 180 equals pi radians, and now we're going to get our way to 60 degree reference angles. So in the previous one, we did our 90s, our quadrantal angles, and our 45 degree reference angles all the way around. Now we're going to get our 60 degree reference angles. So if we take the 180 and divide by 3, that'll be 60 degrees. And that'll be pi over three radians. So let's count around the unit circle in 60, multiples of 60 degrees. So 160 is uh, here in the first quadrant at 60. Two 60s is 120. Three sixties is one eighty. Four sixties 
is 240. 560s is 300. 660s is 360. Counting around those six pi over threes, let's or counting around now in pi over three, we start with zero pi over three, that's at zero. One pi over three is at 60. 120 is two pi over three. One eighty is three pi over three. Two forty is four pi over three. Three hundred is five pi over three. And three sixty is six pi over three. Notice that the three pi over three is equal to pi, and the six pi over three is equal to two pi. So I want, we want to associate this pi over three with 60 degrees. Pi over three radians is 60 degrees. Then what we want is our 30 degree reference angles. So we're gonna uh, convert our 30 degrees into radians. And then we're gonna count around the unit circle in 30 degrees, and then in multiples of the radian version. So 30 degrees is half of 60. So there's 30 degrees. If I take pi over three and cut that in half, that's just pi over six. If you want to cut a fraction in half, double the denominator. Doubling the denominator cuts the fraction in half. Oceans 22 each gets half of what Oceans 11 gets. Double the number of people that you're dividing by, you will cut in half the share for each person. Let's go around the unit circle in multiples of 30. Some of these we're gonna land on already, because there are, there are multiples of 30 already. Then we'll go around and count multiples of pi over three. So here's our first 30. 2 times 30 is 60. 3 times 30 is 90, 4 times 30 is 120, finally we get to a new red one, 5 times 30 is 150, 6 times 30 is 180, 7 times 30 is 210, 8 times 30 is 240, 9 times 30 is 270, 10 times 30 is 300, and a new one, 11 times 30 is 330, and 12 times 30 is 360. So the multiples of 30 are also multiples of 60, are also multiples of 90. So the multiples of 90 are also 30s. The 60s are also 30s. The 180s are also 30s. That's counting around the unit circle in multiples of 30 degrees. Now I just want to do the same thing with multiples of pi over six, because pi over six radians is equal to 30 degrees. So we start off at zero with zero. That makes sense. One pi over six is 30 degrees. Two pi over six is 60 degrees. Three pi over six is 90 degrees. Four pi over six, is 120 degrees. Five pi over six is 150. Six pi over six is 180. Seven pi over six is 210. Eight pi over six is 240. Nine pi over six is 270. 10 pi over six. 
is 311 pi over six. Oops. Is 330 and 12 pi over six, we've come full circle. Every time we were able to simplify the fraction multiple of pi over six, that's because we had the pi over six is uh, all the multiples of pi over six are multiples of 30 degrees. 60 is just two pi over six, but we simplify that to pi over three. 90 is three pi over six, because it's three thirties, and we simplify that to pi over two. So 180 degrees is pi radians. That means pi over two is 90, pi over four is 45, pi over three is 60, and pi over six is 30. Any questions? So we have to go back to the unit circle and all the stuff that we knew about multiples of 30, 45, and 60, or reference angles of 30, 45, and 60, are now things that we have to know about reference angles of pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. It's just another counting system that we have to be aware of and practice using. One full circle, 360 degrees, is the same as one full circle, is two pi radians. It's a different way of measuring things. Two questions? Like having to know also the metric system, which we are totally going to fight tooth and nail. Which is weird because we have all kinds of extra ways of measuring things. You know what I mean? Like if something is kind of far away. It wouldn't really make sense if I said, oh, that spot, it's about 300 feet away. And if you were like, oh, mm, no, I have a visual representation of 300 feet. But if I say it's a football field away, they go, oh, I've seen a football field. That's kind of a long way. You know what I mean? You make fun of people for saying, oh, it's about a football field away. It's like two football fields away. And they go, oh, why don't you just use regular measurements? They're going fine. It's 200 meters away. How far is that? Visualize it. Let's see? It's a stupid thing to make, people, make fun of people for. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't make 200 of anything. It's too many. It's just too many. But two football fields, they're like, oh, I can visualize a football field. And then I could put another one after that. Yeah, that's far away. You know what I mean? Aren't soccer fields like 100 meters long? About? I'm not familiar with soccer. It's, the field is too big. That's what I know about soccer. I see the ball has to go all the way over there. And I go, all right, I got my keys. I'll just drive over there. I'll meet you there. What, it's coming back? This is sounding like exercise. But I think soccer fields are like longer than football fields, right? It's about, a, if it's about 110 yards, it's about 100 meters. So if you want to use the metric system, instead of saying football fields, just say soccer fields. It's two soccer fields away. And he was like, oh, okay. And then Americans will go, well, I don't know how big a soccer field is. And you're like, well, two football fields. And then they know what you're talking about. Because the fact is, if you like about 600 feet, people don't really know what that is. You know how I can tell? Because people are driving along the highway and they're like, oh, your exit's in 600 feet. 
And they're like, oh, do, do, do. oh no. And then they go cutting you off. No one knows what 600 feet is. You know what I mean? But if they're like your exit is in two football fields, once again, when you're driving, you care about time. So when it says one mile away, you have to look at how fast you're going. If you're going 60 miles an hour, it's like, oh, that's a minute away. If you're going 30, then it's going to be like two minutes away. Does that make sense? You need to know how long it is, like time-wise. Anyway. Although the washing machine one was kind of There's an article that had a picture of a pothole, or a safe hole, which I guess is just a large pothole. But anyway, and they said the sinkhole was the size of seven washing machines. High efficiency. What if people do their laundry at a laundromat and they got those big ass washing machines, like seven of those? Meanwhile, there was a minivan right next to it. So they could have just said it's about one and a half minivan. And people were like, oh, that's big because I've seen minivans. You stood next to a minivan. How long is a minivan? See, telling you how many feet it is doesn't really help, right? How long is the car that you drove here in today? 10 feet? How many people have a car that's less than 10 feet long? How many people don't even know? How useful is it to say that something is 10 feet away or even three meters away when no one has a visualization of that? But if it's a car length away, that actually kind of makes sense. We can visualize that. How many cars can you fit between me and, and that wall over there? If I had to parallel park cars in this little gap right here, how many would fit? It should be three. But we could probably get two the way people park, right? Because people would be parking and the front of their car would easily be six feet off of this front thing, which is actually a smart move because if we put three cars here, it'd be kind of hard to get out after them. Actually, if they were literally in this room, that would be extra exceptionally hard to get out because these doors don't fit cars, right? But that's beside the point. Anyway. You know what I mean? So don't make fun of people for using measurements that don't seem to make sense that aren't part of a measuring system, unless you immediately turn that around and say, okay, poor guy, how many feet away was it? Because that doesn't really help. You know what I mean? Here's how I can know who worked, who's worked construction before. How many feet is it from this wall to that wall? How big is this room? It's the size of one medium classroom. Does that put a picture in your mind? Yeah. But how many feet is it from front to back, from side to side? You want to have any idea? I'm not saying that I do. I'm just saying it. Measuring things in feet from meters or centimeters or stuff like that doesn't help you visualize how big something is. How high is the ceiling? Is it 10 feet? Eight feet? How wide is the door? See, these are all things that we don't have numbers for anyway. I think, the, I think our phones may be stuck. Now I'm curious. This, by the way, happens every friggin' time. So from this corner down here over to this thing right here, this encounter, because I couldn't divide it. How far is that? How many feet? I took 10 steps. 
I took 10 steps, right? And I'm six feet tall, so 30 feet. Trick question. I have short legs. It's 25 feet. So anyway. So that saying it's 25 feet, that also doesn't really help us. But now the three cars that we would want to park here, they kind of have to be flat. Because if this is 25 feet, we would need some short cars. You know what I mean? It's also difficult to measure cars, right? Because this is indoors and we don't normally see cars indoors. Any questions? I guess my point is we're just learning a different measuring system because sometimes it's more convenient to have a period for a function of two pi about 6.28 than it is to have a period for a function to be 360. That is sometimes inconvenient to break things up into 360ths when we could just break it up into units like one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a little bit more convenient and easier to deal with than breaking things up too much. So instead of saying that this is a 20 foot wall, breaking it up too much would be to say this is um, a 240 inch wall. That's too many. We don't have a concept of that. It's more convenient to say two football fields than it is to say 600 feet. Does that make sense? It's all about how we measure things. All right, so here's your task. Here's what you need to do. You've learned the unit circle in degrees, 30, 45, 60, then the 90, and then all the way around, the corresponding reference angles. You've learned 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, 135, 150, 180, 210, 225, 240, 270, 300, 315, 330, and 360. All you have to do now is learn that around in radians. Pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, two pi over three, three pi over four, five pi over six, pi. Just learn to count in the fractions. And the first place to go is actually with the 30, pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, 30, 60, 90. Uh, and then when you get on the other side, four pi over six, that's two pi over three, pi over three, that's a 60, so that must be the 120. So once you start putting things together, start with the pi over threes. Once you start putting things together, you'll learn which ones you'll need to know. So that you'll learn the 30s are pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. You can't reduce those. And since we said pi over six, they must have the 30 degree reference angle. Pi over three, two pi over three, four pi over three, five pi over three, the four that we can't simplify. We keep saying pi over three, and we know that pi over three is 60 degrees. So those must be the 60 degree reference angles. 60, 120, 240, and 300. How's everybody okay? Are you sure? On the scale of one to three football fields. How's everybody? That often comes up in like the Europe versus America stuff. And I know it's all just like fun and games. Like the way we write dates and stuff like that, as if writing, what's today, the 29th? As if writing 29 September 2000 is, is any better than September 29th. I mean, that's how you say it anyway. And never mind, if you're trying to encode the date in some way, it'd be better to write 2022-09-29. Because then everything that happened in 2022 will be organized from start to finish. Do you know what I mean? You should go from big to small, because then it'll come out in order when you sort by name. Anyway. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break until next week on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. I said today was going to be a little bit short, and it looks like I was correct. That's it for this week. I will see you on Tuesday. Everybody have a good weekend and thanks for playing.